Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are having a wonderful day or evening. In today's story, OP's wife cheated on him and then left him for her AP and it was the absolute worst mistake she's ever made in her life. Her life has completely derailed since and now she is crying for mercy. Now, let's get into today's story to find out what happened. I, 31 male, and my ex-wife, 29 female, were married for 7 years and together for 9 years before she cheated and left me for the other guy. Our divorce was finalized in March of this year. The other guy is a playboy jerk who's probably 24-ish. It began at the end of last year and in January of the current year. She told me she wanted a divorce. I found out they had been talking for an entire year before it turned physical last October. The divorce was smoothish as we didn't have any kids. She got the car. I kept my house and finances. After that, I was out of her life, and she was out of mine. We never contacted each other, except for one or two times. That was also when we last saw each other in public. Her family is very conservative, and they basically cut her off after she cheated and divorced. She moved in with the other guy. During this time, I found out she also lost a lot of friends as the other guy tried to hit on them or insulted them. Her ex sets of friends tried to get me involved in their fights, immature, but I included this part because these sets of friends were the ones to stand behind her after she had an affair, telling me she found herself and I should probably let her go. I don't harbor any resentment toward her or the other guy. I didn't get involved with anyone during this period because I was focused on my job and earning back the money I lost during the divorce. Here's where I need help. Two days ago, I got a call from one of my ex-wife's friends who told me my ex-wife wanted my number. I changed it after the divorce. She didn't say much when I asked her why and told me she needed to talk. I thought it was important as, mind you, we never had any contact, so her suddenly wanting to talk to me created a sense of seriousness. I told her to give her my number. Yesterday, my ex-wife called, and she sounded very creepy. She didn't have the voice she used to. It was broken. You could sense something was wrong. So I asked her, what's up? And she broke down crying. She went from telling me how great things were to how things were now. So, the other guy was a manipulative and alcoholic piece of garbage who cheated on her multiple times in their seven-month relationship. He put her in charge of finances, which meant she had to get a job even though she was pregnant. Now he doesn't want to be the father, so he told her she cheated. He has been abusing her. She has no place to go, and he told her she had to get an abortion if she wanted to be together. I asked her why she called me instead of the police, and she told me she had nowhere else to go. None of her friends were willing to help her out, and that POS has friends in the department, so she was scared things would go around. She couldn't contact her family because they didn't want anything to do with her, so she was alone. Listening to her made me sad. It really did. I told her I could sympathize but couldn't do anything else because I didn't want to be the third party. I told her that whatever relationship we had had with each other was over and she was on her own now. Why should I stand up for her when she's no one to me? Besides, they're a couple now. They're dating and she's the one earning. She has the upper hand. I gave her advice to save funds and run away silently if she didn't want to get an abortion. It was a 17-minute call, and she basically wanted to talk more, but I told her I was busy and cut her off. She did mention she was sorry to treat me and leave me. I honestly don't care about that. I told her to contact me only when it was necessary because I really didn't want to hear from her anymore. Yesterday night, I thought about it deeply and felt I should do something because no one deserves that kind of abuse. But I don't want to get in between because getting in between will blow up my own peace. I'm looking for advice on if I can do anything to help her out. I called her family and they told me they wanted nothing to do with her because she was already dead to them. Guys, I have no intention of getting back together with her, taking her back, or even wanting to help her. I sent her links to the rescue and I tried to contact her family. They told me to cut her off. The only reason I want to help her is that she reached out to me as a last resort and I don't want to spend my life in regret if anything serious happens to her knowing I could have helped but chose not to, which is why I made this post. I'm going to send her money via her friend before telling her this is all I can do and that she shouldn't reach out to me unless it's urgent. Update. I helped her, 
I passed a few thousand worth of dollars to her via her friend and told her she could take care of herself as I didn't want to be a part of this. We talked on the phone for 38 minutes on the 14th. She told me how sorry she was and went on to talk about the memorable times we spent. Not once did she tell me she wanted to get back together. I noticed she wasn't begging or asking for help, but rather she told me it's the path she chose, and she knew she couldn't keep or provide for the child. The other guy would let her keep it, and she doesn't want to abort it. I found this out the day before yesterday. She shot herself, that other guy was a piece of crap, and had a gun, illegal, of course. She just left a note saying it was her path that she chose and apologized to everyone she had hurt. The police are still investigating. From what I heard, the other guy has been taken into custody for possessing illegal firearms and is currently on the top suspect list. I'm not in contact with her friends or family. I work in a different city, so I'm not in town. From what I've heard, her friends are preparing to testify against the other guy. No one from her family or friends reached out to me. I don't know if her family knows, but I don't intend to tell them. I can't sleep right now because of it. There's fucking guilt in my heart. I could have helped her. I could have done something more. I could have done something, but I chose to not get involved, which led her to kill herself. I still don't know what more happened as I heard it from a friend of mine, whose relative is a part of the investigating group. I didn't want to make this post, but I needed to get this off my chest. I've thrown up twice and still can't get a grip on myself. OP, you did help her. You sent her thousands of dollars. You listened to her. You don't have any magical powers that could have stopped what happened if she did actually hurt herself. There's a reason why the partner is the number one suspect. I'm so sorry you were dragged into this mess. There's no telling if they would have taken you both out if you were more involved. I hope you were seeing a therapist to help sort this all out. She didn't kill herself because you refused to help. You did help. She chose to kill herself because she destroyed her marriage, she got pregnant, and the man she left you for abused her. He wouldn't let her keep the baby. She humiliated her family with the nude pictures, and the mental toll of all of these things combined drove her to the point of despair. That is assuming the guy didn't kill her and make it seem like a suicide. I hope you can find peace with your situation, OP, and are truly able to heal. Now, let's get into today's second story. This took me by surprise. So, the first thing I should have noticed was that even when she was love-bombing me heavily, she always kept me hidden from her inner family circle, mom and stepdad, but a cousin met me and her cousins back in her home country. That was a shock. So anyway, while on FaceTime, she would always ask me to put myself on mute if she didn't have an earbud in. She talked a little about her ex and what he did to her, punched her, and she told me that I was a welcome change. However, here is the thing, it must have gotten so bad when she was with him in Cali and she moved to NYC, but he didn't want to leave. She was 26 and he was in his 40s. So, whatever happened, they split for a long time and it was about one year until they saw each other. She kept a trinket that she brought over that he made from his little fingerboard company. At the time, I didn't know that object was from him. She said, my friend made this for me. Then he started spam texting her. She would block the number and he would make another virtual number and spam text and call her at work. I had a hell of a time trying to tell her to change her phone number. She gave me the most annoyed look when I told her she must have liked the abuse. She gave me a stern look and said, don't say that about me. I don't know what clicked in her head, but she finally changed her phone number and the texts stopped. We went on vacation together to Miami Beach, and we had an amazing time. But she said apparently her ex found out she went to Miami Beach with someone, and he was annoyed. Now I wished I knew what her response was on the phone to him about that. Anyway, I was staying at her house for a few weeks. I would see her on her phone and think nothing of it. I remember my Snapchat went off, and she got so annoyed. She reached over my leg and tapped my phone, and I just looked at her, and she said Snapchat was for cheating. I had a blank look on my face, so I unlocked my phone in front of her and said, Oh hey, it's my friend from work. I work at UPS so he was just showing himself near the shoreline. Boy, she felt like a total idiot. If she had a tail, it would have been between her legs. That was the second time she ever did something like that. Okay, getting to the meat of it now. 
She took a trip out west to see her mom and siblings, which lasted five days. On Saturday, she called me. I blew up on her about liking a post minutes after it was posted, but she didn't respond to my text like eight hours later. Her response was, I just didn't want to talk to you. Mind you, this girl was maybe five weeks later sending me so many emojis in the morning, or she would keep her FaceTime on all day at work, so I could see what she was doing, I thought that was a bit much. She did let me know on Thursday she was headed to Le, and that's when the daily FaceTime conversations ended. I found out she lied to me about it, and it was a bad one at that. She told me that her stepdad had her car and had taken over the car payments he lives in Nevada. However, before she left NV, I asked her where her car was, and you could tell that I had caught her off guard. She scratched behind her ear and said her dad had it. So, after she left for La, the car showed up in a picture at the lake in Bullhead AZ, but it had Cali plates on it. After about two days of not hearing from her, she sent some photos, and it was vegan spots she said were dear to her. However, in one photo, she was sitting in the car, and the steering wheel had an oil spot on it. In the other photo, she was holding a cup, and maybe an hour later the ex took a picture in the driver's seat with the same oil mark, meaning they met up. She told me she had a seafood tower dinner. I didn't even bother to ask who she was with because it was obvious. The best part was instead of saying she gave the car back to her dad, she said she left it at her cousin's house. And get this, all that talking and FaceTime, she didn't even let me know she had arrived back in NYC. She got back to my text like two days later, and when she called, she was at the subway station waiting for the train. And when she said, I'll text you when I get home, she never did, I didn't hold my breath. The number of lies. She was trying to not let me know she was talking with the ex again, but I already knew when I saw she had added his two accounts on Instagram. She has since blocked me, but not my phone number. I took like three days of reading and I feel like I have so much more to learn about narcs and codependency. I feel like I've been put on a shelf for safekeeping. Even now, it's just so shocking, like when she was in NV, she had no issues keeping in touch, but when she got to LA and back to NYC, she went silent again. I even sent her a photo yesterday and not even a response to that. Oh and yeah, in regards to the codependency when we were dating, I was gone for two weeks, but we fast time for hours each day. She felt so bad that I came a day early before the two weeks were up, and she was crying, thinking I wasn't going to come back anymore. This just had me second-guessing if some stuff she said was true or not, and that's just a horrible feeling to have. OP, here are my thoughts on the situation. You're not her savior. You should not contact her anymore. Block her on everything. Don't worry about her or the ex-dude anymore. Find yourself a put-together gal who is smart and caring and is giving of herself, not selfish nor immature. She sounds like a textbook narcissist. She doesn't really want you, but she doesn't want to let you go. I believe it's more than just keeping you as a backup plan. She's actually stringing you along like a toy and only takes you out occasionally before putting you back away until she's ready again. Life is too short to be anyone's puppet. I wish you the best of luck, OP. Thank you for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed the stories, please comment below and like and subscribe if you haven't already. If there is a story you would like to share with me, please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.